Hello. I'm going to walk through question five on page five of your fall 2019 exam two. This one's about biking with a helmet. And reading through the background, what are some of the key parts to pick up on? They talk about wearing helmets is important. An article stated that 70% of all parents in the U.S. reported that their child always wears a helmet when biking. The city council believes that the rate in Ann Arbor, the rate of Ann Arbor parents who report this is higher than the stated rate of 70%. So they want to do an initial study with a random sample of how many? A random sample of just 20 Ann Arbor parents. 18 said, yes, their child always wears a helmet. They turn these results over to us to perform the appropriate test at a 5% level significance. In reading through, these are the four steps for doing hypothesis testing, stating the appropriate hypotheses. We're going to be checking the assumptions, performing the test, and in particular, we're asked to provide and label both the test statistic value and the p-value. And then, of course, at the end, provide our decision and conclusion. Both of those items need to be there. So let's go through the steps. We're looking at rates. We want to assess if the rate of Ann Arbor parents who report is higher than the stated rate of 70%. And rates indicate proportions. So step number one. We're testing hypotheses about a population proportion, is it 70% for all Ann Arbor parents? Or is it indeed that population rate for all Ann Arbor parents who report their child always wears a helmet, is it more than 70%? We are not asked to define the parameter, but the parameter here is the population proportion for Ann Arbor parents who do so. The significance level alpha is set to be 0.05. Step number two, we're not asked to state the assumptions, we're asked to go right ahead and perform the check of the necessary assumptions. The sample being random is already given to us. So if we're doing a hypothesis test about a population proportion, if we were going to state, and we didn't have to here, but if we did, the stating of it would be the n times p being at least 10 and n times 1 minus p being at least 10. And that's right in our help card where it says what we need to have a normal approximation for the sample proportion. We are, though, asked to do the check of the assumptions. And in hypothesis testing, we check it with p naught. So we need to see if the 20 Ann Arbor parents that are sampled with a supposed rate of 70%, is that going to give us our at least 10? Well, this would be 14. And so that's at least 10, but the other side is not going to be big enough. 30% of 20 is only 6, and that is not at least 10. It is this that tells us we must not do a large sample Z test, but instead we need to perform the small sample binomial test instead. Noting that, we need to then conduct the appropriate test. And we did see quite often that even though this check might have been done, some went on to still do a Z test statistic and a Z p-value using the normal distribution instead. But here we need to perform the binomial test. The binomial test has an easy test statistic and a much more complicated p-value to be able to compute. And if we need to, we can always check back on our help card to that binomial probability model. But the test statistic in a binomial test is simply the count. We're going back to doing the counting instead of doing the rates. And the test statistic here is just the count statistic, which is how many parents in the sample of 20 said yes, their child always wears a helmet. So it is indeed, oops, excuse me, it is indeed the 18 that was given in the background here. 
not 18 out of 20, which would be p hat, and not converting that p hat to a z test statistic, but simply the count statistic. The p value, on the other hand, takes a little more effort here because we need to find the probability of getting a test statistic, a count statistic, as large as 18 or even larger, because that's our direction of HA. And we need to do that assuming that the value of the true rate is really the H0 value of 70%. So this does require finding the probability of 18 successes when the success rate is 70% and the failure rate 30%. So that would be 18 successes and two failures. That's as extreme, but we also keep the definition of a p-value consistent. It's as extreme or more extreme here as larger, larger. So we need to do the 19 and the 20. So our final term in the p-value computations is for all 20 saying yes. So there is some calculator work involved here. Starting on the end, 20 choose 20 is pretty easy. That's picking everybody. There's only one way. And 0.7 raised to the 20th. Well, if we rounded that to four places, it'd be 0, 0, 0, 8. And anything to the 0 power here is going to be 1. When we are picking 19 out of 20, that's like leaving the one person at home in the sense that there are 20 choices then. And we have 0.7 raised to the 19th and just one of these 0.3s. This 20 choose 18 is something that would need to be computed. And we could use our calculators to do so, or we could do a quick little calculation on the side. We would have 20 factorial on the top. We would have an 18 factorial that will cancel with most, and we'll be left with a 2 factorial. So this 18 down cancels out, 2 goes into 20 10 times, so that's going to be 190. And then we would have our 0.7 to the 18th, and squaring the 0.3. And we need to add up those three terms. Doing a little calculator work to get our p-value that is quite small of 0, 0.354. So again, that is our complete test statistic and p-value. We don't need to standardize anything. We didn't have a large enough sample size to do any kind of normal approximation here. We're sticking with the binomial test. But then when we take our p-value, and we needed a p-value in step 3 to be able to make a decision and get credit for that decision in step 4, but since our p-value, 0.03, is less than the 5% level of significance, our decision is to reject H0. We didn't have to explain why, but certainly the reason behind it is that the p-value of 0 0.0354 is indeed less than or equal to alpha, which is 0 0.05. So that will lead to a nice conclusion. That conclusion being, again, saying we have sufficient support for this HA. And so we just need to write out HA in words in the right context. So there is sufficient support. There is sufficient evidence. Sufficient evidence to say what? To say the population proportion <coughs> excuse me <coughs> of all Ann Arbor parents report 
that their child always wears a bike helmet when biking. <coughs> the key here is, of course, that it's about Ann Arbor parents. And we need to have population rate or population proportion or the word all to indicate population. So I hope that helps step through question number five.